Hey all, uh, welcome back to Neon's Movie Reviews. I'm Neon, this is my review channel. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about the 1998 uh, Brian De Palma film Snake Eyes. Uh, before I dive into that though, just want to say, if you enjoy my content, please give this video a like, it really helps out the channel. And uh, we are a couple weeks into the summer of Nick Cage right now, still have a couple more weeks of this to go. I'm going to be doing a daily release. And um, yeah, if you want to see a lot more content like that, uh, please subscribe and hit the little bell button in the corner to actually get notified. But uh, Snake Eyes. Um, this was a film I knew nothing about going in. I'd never seen it. Um, I knew it was, really all I knew about it was that it was one of the more mixed reviewed De Palma films. And I had heard that basically the first two acts are absolutely amazing. And then it all falls apart at the end. Um, so it was one that I was kind of skeptical on, but that cage, let's check it out. And boy, was I was I surprised. Um, so basic basic plot about this movie is Nick Cage. He plays Rick Santoro. He's a uh, Atlantic City really dirty cop. Um, everything's got a price, and he'll he'll look the other way. He'll do whatever, but there's a price tag. And uh, he's good friends with Gary Sinise, who is, uh, I think his character is Kevin Dunn. He's basically just higher up military guy. And they're at this, uh, they have really good seats at this, uh, at this big boxing match. Uh, and Gary Sinise is there to protect, uh, to protect a high ranking individual. And some stuff goes on. Shooting takes place, assass or uh, the assassination attempt is made on on this guy, and then the assassin is killed by Gary Sinise. Now it's a question of who all else was involved in this, what all happened. There's a lot of moving pieces, and um, De Palma just has so much fun with this movie. Um, it's really, really impressive. He the the opening opening sequence. I uh, I I I don't want to go too far into into spoilers about this movie. It's it was one that I didn't know much about, so I just I just had a really really good time with it. I will talk about some at the end, but for the most part, this is gonna be spoiler free. Um, but yeah, this so the beginning it opens up see this casino you see news news footage uh there it, there's a hurricane there and basically they're filming um they're the the reporter is actually told to redo the or to reshoot the footage because she called it a hurricane they don't want to use that word it's going to deter traffic yeah they're going to deter crowds so just use tropical storm and um and then camera pans over a little bit. You see this other screen. Uh, there's a reporter on the inside, or I think he's one of the announcers actually. Uh, and um, Nick Cage comes on uh, with him. They're messing around, just kind of fooling around a bit. And then camera pans over. They walk. They walk past the the uh, the displays, and then we just follow Nick Cage as he starts walking through this entire facility, and. It's done to look like one one shot. I, I watched this sequence like five or six times, and I only caught a few cuts, but I they they did a really good job of hiding the cuts. But um, yeah, basically you just follow him as he goes from where he's where he's introduced all the way through the facility, downstairs to all the different like levels, goes out onto the onto the the floor goes to a seat and it's just this crazy awesome shot or made to look like one shot but it's just it's this crazy really fun sequence uh, and you get a you get a sense for the sc scale of this place how many people are there how big and how, how much is going on all the different little things moving around and then when the assassination takes place and you have that whole mystery kick in it just makes everything get crazy because you start realizing, oh shit, was this person involved? Was this involved? Was this involved? You see all these little, really cool little character actors and, and just really cool character bits and you have no idea who is involved. And uh, 
I, I really enjoyed it. Um, kind of fell apart in the ending. I, I will I will agree there, but not not in the way that I was expecting. It was just more anticlimactic, and I'll talk about that in, in the spoiler section because of what I found out was supposed to take place. But overall, I really enjoyed this. Uh, even even how they pulled off the ending, it was. It was daring. Um, but yeah, just hi highly recommend this. If you have not seen this, I would give this a... It's like right in between 7 and 8. So I'll go 7.5 on this one out of 10. Um, I really enjoyed this. Really, really do recommend this if you have not seen it. Uh, if you have seen this, let me know what, what you thought of this. Um, but uh, talk about some of the spoiler stuff, though. Um, so... L looking so the film ends got this great sequence where Gary Sinise Gary Sinise is revealed to be the bad guy like, or one of the bad guys that was involved in this thing and it's done around the middle point of the film and I've seen a lot of I saw a lot of cr criticism about that but I know De Palma came out and he stated that like that hadn't that it wasn't that type of movie this was a film about these two friends and one of them realizing what the other one who the other one actually is and so revealing the villain's identity worked really well for that it's kind of like how the alien covenant did the whole walter david thing um but again staying on track um so that happens and they turn on they turn on Nick Cage. He's protecting this girl who knows and can kind of prove who's all involved. And so he's protecting her. They're beating the fuck out of him, trying to get find out where she is. And uh, they end up putting a, a a bug on on his uh, his jacket. Let him go. They like knock him out and they set it up so that it looks like he can escape. But they're allowing him to go so that way they can see where she is and film just kind of goes right there there's some shit with the storm a little bit some stuff breaks through the wall ambulance ends up breaking in right right as he's trying to kill kill nick cage and the girl uh played by carla carla cugino i think it's pronounced uh gugino cugino i think it's c-u-g-i-n-o might be g-u-g-i-n-o i'm good with names but i'm bad with names at the same time um Anyway, it, the mom from the mom from Spy Kids, and uh, she was also Sin City and Silk Spectre and Watchmen. She's been countless, countless movies. You know who the fuck it is. But if not, you really should. She's a really talented actress. Um, here she's she gives a fine role performance. Nothing, nothing really special, but nothing bad by any means. It was she was just one of the many players in this film. But so. Gary Sinise tries to take them out, ambulance breaks through the wall, perfect situation kind of takes place, and Gary Sinise is stuck in a situation, he can't kill them now, and so all reporters start filming and everything, and he basically turns his back to the cameras, puts the gun to his right to his heart, pulls the trigger, and just commits suicide. And then, and he had been warning Nick Cage throughout the film, like, especially once Nick Cage found out that if Nick Cage went and, you know, turned him in, Nick Cage's life and career are going to be ruined because of how corrupt Nick Cage is. And that plays out. That was something I really, really, really liked, that that actually comes to happen. And, uh character you know the it, i really enjoyed that the hero even through all the shit he goes through the fact that he takes this personal interest that he really shouldn't have he's go doing all the extra work to try to do this right for the first time and it ends up destroying his career and i love that because number one is unexpected you don't especially in a hollywood m mystery it's you never see the hero fail like that. And that was really, really nice. Um, but the other part that made it really nice is 
the character's sacrifice throughout the entire film. You know how despicable he is. And then there's a point in the film where he's offered like a million dollars and you really don't know what he's going to do. You don't know if he's going to turn on her or if he's going to protect her. And it's a really good character moment. Uh, I mean, he's a fantastic character. He's just chewing all the scenery in, in this in this movie. But he's not greedy either. He lets plenty of actors get, have their moments. Like, he doesn't mind sharing the scene. He's really, really good in this one. Um, Rick Centaur was probably one of my favorite Nick Cage characters. But, so, you have all that. It's really good. I really like that. It does feel a little Hollywoodish because the girl wants him. You know, get the Hollywoodized pseudo happy ending like on there. So what I ended up finding out, though, I figured that stuff was kind of tacked on, or at least that little end bit was tacked on, because I knew there was something wrong with the ending that it got switched, it got fucked up in post. But apparently, the stuff with him like taking himself out and all that. It was not supposed to happen. It was supposed to be this crazy fucking action build-up ending. I, I imagine, like, a Tony Scott-style, like, standoff shootout sequence taking place between all the characters. And while that's going on, the storm is coming through, and it's and the giant tidal waves are coming, and I think the, the building was supposed to start getting flooded. So you have all... You have the storm element, you have all the tension and everything finally past the point uh, you know of no return guns are out bullets are flying and all of this stuff just crashing into one another and for some reason studio is just like yeah i only used uh, ilm and it costs a lot of money to have them do all the special effects for that but yeah we're taking that out make it make it work and so I, I have no idea why they did that. Um, maybe it was a bleaker ending, but I don't, I don't think that's the case because he even references, like, he talks about almost drowning and it's kind of weird. It's like, oh, maybe he was drowning, like, figuratively speaking. But no, knowing the original ending, like, oh, no, the place, he probably did almost drown. Uh, all right. So I really don't know why the studio did that. Maybe... The only, the only thing I can think of is that maybe that shootout was too graphic, and I know the studio during production wanted, or they, they'd greenlit it as an R-rated film, they greenlit the script and everything, and then they were just like, you know what, do you think we can make this PG-13? So I know there's not much profanity in the movie, I think there's only one use of fuck, um, the blood in it is not gratuitous. It feels very much like, like Pelican Brief or like an 80s or 70s like conspiracy thriller. There is blood. You can see the blood. It does spurt a little bit, but it's not gratuitous. And uh, so it definitely could have gotten by on that. Um, there's some sexual situations, but there's no like sexuality in the movie. So I... I it definitely felt like it should be an R-rated movie, but I can see how I don't know. Under, I, I don't understand why the studio would want to, but I can understand how the studio would look at this and be like, you know what? If we just took just tweak this and tweak this, it could be PG-13. Okay, let's do that. Um, so I can under sort of understand that, but thankfully, it still came out R doesn't seem to have been too badly affected by that, but I think that ending was a casualty of that, of them trying to maintain that PG-13. Still got an R, and we're just like, eh, whatever, just get it out the door. And I feel like that's what happened. I'm gonna be really sad if that is actually what happened, because that's horrible. If they got their R rating, they should have just been like, okay, you know what, send this back for review with the original ending. And, uh, just, let's just get it out the, the way it was meant to be. So, but, enough rambling about that. Um, Rick Santoro, as I said before, is one of the best Nick Cage characters I've seen. One of my favorites. Um, but he just, he just is chewing all the cedar. You can't take your eyes off of him. But, they do this really cool thing where they will revisit certain scenes that you saw from 
like following Nick Cage around or other characters around and you'll see it from a new perspective. And these scenes are really cool because like Nick Cage is rarely ever the star of them. He's usually like you get the weird De Palma like shots and editing and everything for that. And these are the scenes where the film really came into its own for me because this is where Nick Cage kind of takes a back seat. He becomes the co-star for a moment as you walk as you follow this side character becoming the main character. And sometimes you're seeing it literally through their eyes as they're interacting in full first person mode. That's really fucking cool. And I thoroughly enjoyed it. And it's one of those that like that opening sequence with that that long shot, you get to see all the other little pieces of those characters that he bumped into that came across his him there. And you get to see how all those stories inter interweave. But Really, really, really enjoy this movie. Um, probably my favorite scene is the uh, is the like him playing it through his mind. It's that that um, where you got the the split screen, so you see like Nick Cage over here, and then you just get the the different angles, the different scenes as he's replaying or like retracing through how it all went down. Sees Gary Sinise like actually killing the guy like all this stuff that's probably my favorite scene as as he's putting it together in his head and um though the the other scene with the uh with the fighter where it's from his point perspective is really cool too um what was your favorite scene like i'm really cool cu- really curious actually you know what? fuck that scratch that the goddamn opening is my favorite that that hooked me right from the get-go i actually rewatched that opening like five or six times because it was just so intriguing and I just kept missing things and being like, hold up, I fucking missed something. And, um, yeah, uh, yeah, that, hands down, best scene than those other two. But, yeah, what did you guys think of this movie? Was, uh, was this a letdown for you guys? Did you enjoy it? Like, I'm curious to see if I'm one of the few that enjoys this or if, like, if this is a film that a lot of people did enjoy and it was just more the critics that didn't like it. Or is this a film that, like, you felt like the critics, but you really like the first two acts, and then you're not the biggest fan of, but you still really like those first two acts, and that's enough for you. Um, for me, it was a bit of, bit of all. Um, but, yeah. And then, also, what's what's your favorite De Palma film? Um, mine's got to be Carlito's Way. That's, that's, for me, I thought it was the most unlike him, and the most daring of his films, not, not daring, but he went outside of his comfort zone for that film, in my opinion. And uh, yeah, can't, can't wait to talk about that one. Um, but yeah, stay tuned for a lot more content. Uh, that's going to wrap this up. I've got a lot more Nick Cage reviews to go through. I recently uh, watched Next and uh, what's the other one I watched? Uh, That's not a good sign. I can't remember the other one I watched. That's not a good sign about that movie. Hope y'all enjoyed this. Hope y'all stay safe. Bye.